Hello everyone. So we have Dr. Sanjay Panda with us here. Thank you, Sir Mr. Panda, for joining us today. We are obliged to have you here today with us. Thank you, thank you. You are welcome. So, Mr. Panda, here are a few queries from the world of textiles, world of handlooms, which we would like you to answer for us. So that you, with your valued inputs, our view, viewers would get knowledge and they would they would appreciate it and they would work more, they would appreciate handloom more. <coughs> Very good. So here goes my first question. What inspired you to work with the handlooms? This is the 7th of August. <laughs> we have just, you know, two days back, we had the 6th National Handloom Day. Yeah. So on the eve of the National Handloom Day, let me wish all the best and convey greetings to our handloom members. And also to persons like you who are promoter of handloom and who are wearing hand. <laughs> now you are asking a delicate personal question, but let me try to answer that question. Yeah. You see, every every individual, all of us, are influenced by our family and particularly the childhood days to a great extent. Very true. I I was brought up in an environment where you know there was a lot of uh, compassion yeah. for the poor people. We I have tried to carry over till today. So after completing my education, I joined initially forest service and then Indian administrative service in the year 1980. And I was alerted to Tripura Academy. Okay. Tripura, you know, is a small state of the northeastern region. Yeah, we know that. And it is, it is one of the poorest state of the country. You know, when we joined 1980, <laughs> the... Uh, uh, the uh, people below poverty line were something like more than 70%. Actually, so, I would say Tripura is unexplored. That is what I feel. Yes, you know, northeastern region, there is problem of geographical isolation. But what I am referring to, you are mentioning about my interest in handloom. So I was trying to address that issue. So Tripura, you know, my sensitivity towards the poor, towards the disadvantage, got further reinforced during my working in Tripura. Yeah. It so happened that uh, in the eighth year of my service, 1988, I was posted as director of Handloom Handicraft Sericulture. Okay. You know, Tripura has got a very good tradition of handloom, you know, in the entire northeastern region. The tribal ladies, they weave their own garments. It is loin loom, what is called backstrap loom. Yeah. But it has got a very rich color and design combinations. And every household has a backstrap loom. They make their own garments. So as director of textiles, I had to director of handloom handicraft agriculture. I had the opportunity of visiting tribal areas and then seeing the design, how they are weaving, and that generated the interest. Incidentally, in Tripura also there are broad loop, frame looms, which basically the people who have migrated from, uh, you know, East Pakistan, now Bangladesh to Tripura, mm. they are actually basically Devnath and the Uyghur communities, they do the broad loom and white fabrics. Okay. Simultaneously, you know, in Tripura is also famous for bamboo handicraft. Yeah, people we make a wide range of very exquisite, you know, handicraft. So that I think, if I'm uh, true to myself, that was the foundation on which I started. And in the year '89, I came to Orissa on an interested deputation. Okay. Then again, that time I was fortunate that I was posted in uh, as managing director of Orissa Tassel Silk Cooperative Society which is known as Serifed now, and their brand name is Amla. So I, I, I worked there as managing director. I dealt with the silk and dresser, producer, weaver, everybody. So that was a very good beginning in the Orissa context. And shortly thereafter, I was posted as director of textile Orissa. 
where I continued for over four years, almost over five years, till '94. So those five years, I think, was a golden opportunity, where you know my sensitivity towards the poor and disadvantaged, along with that, the love for art and artistic things. You know, I combine that thing and the interest in Hanlum view, and that is that I am carrying forward. Again, by coincidence, as to I believe in God and I feel by grace of God, I got the posting as Secretary Ministry of Textiles in August 2014. And I had the privilege and opportunity of working under the visionary Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji as the Secretary of Textiles where I continued for about 17 months till my retirement from service in December 2015. Yeah. And it was, I think, one of the very, very enjoyable, educative, and enlightening period of my service career. And if I have, I'm still a student, I'm trying to learn about Handloom. And the masters are nobody other than the Handloom weaver, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Panda, for sharing your experience, your life experience. It means a lot for us and our viewers got to learn, know a lot about you. So moving on to our next question. Our next question is, please tell our viewers about the process of weaving. According to you, what is weaving and what is the process that involves, that is that are involved in weaving? You see, human basic needs are three. Roti, yeah. Kapra and Makan. Okay, Very. so the entire civilized society, we are grateful to the weavers who supplied us the second most important basic requirement of life, that is Very Kapra. True. Very true. If you see that before the loom was discovered, people were using basically either the skin of animals hmm. or the bark of trees or leaf of trees to protect themselves hmm. from extreme climate. You know, that is what is the genesis of fabrics. Then came, you know, the uh, cotton cultivation, cotton yarn, zarkha, and then the loom. And the process has gone on and on. Yeah. You are asking about weaving. Weaving is a simple process. You know, you take two threads. Some thread you take longitudinally, that is called warp. And along the warp, you put another thread across it at right angle. That is called weft. Okay. In Hindi, mein, isko jo lambai se hai, usko dana bolte hain, aur jo akras hota hai, usko bana bolte hain. So dana and bana. And the process of weaving is where you adjust the warp and put the weft across it. So that is how the entire concept of weaving comes. Since you are youngsters, you would be interested to know. And I understand you are a computer engineer, you have done degree in information technology. So the genesis of computer has started from Haribo. Because the binary system, you know, either the light is on or it is off. off. Either it is zero or one. Really? So that is what the weaving process. When you talk of warp and putting the wave accuracy, a particular thread, either it is up or it is down. down. So that is how the entire concept of designing has come. But you know, this entire industry has gone through a revolutionary process. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was only pure handloom. Then we have got designing devices. Then, you know, the industrial revolution came. Then the, you know, the uh, discovery of power loom, composite mills, and a whole set of, you know, discovery uh, is going on. Still, it is going on. Now we are having subtleless looms. You know, loom without subtle. Now we are having uh, textiles, you know, where there is no loom is required. So th those are, you know, high-end technology, particularly when you talk of the fashion industry, new type of garment, and, you know, we have got something like called the technical textiles. So, yeah. you know, this industry is very vast, and all over the world, you know, is playing a very important role in the economy, providing employment, and, you know, the, in the making the life of human being easier, simpler, and more enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Panda. Moving on, our next question to you is, how do you feel, like how do you, how do weaving techniques vary while weaving different types of handloom? Like for example, a Banarasi silk is very different from Odisha Ikkat silk. 
so what what how how does it vary what is the difference between the kind techniques of weaving <laughs> you see this is a very fundamental question when i was director of textile odisha yeah. that time you know for the odisha weaver and odisha consumer like you yeah. i have published a book you know this was published in 94 and yeah. it was in odia where yeah. this process has been discussed in very simple thing you see i mentioned that you know basically weaving is the process of playing with tana and bana yes now you are mentioning about to design Yeah. So the designing we can broadly, you know, categorize into two categories. Either you are designing using the same thread. Either you are using the same thread and you are making designing the fabrics. Okay. Other thing you are otherwise you are using additional thread. Okay. So when you are using additional thread, that is normally called extra warp and extra weft. Yes. Uh, like you see, the you are put on a beautiful, you know, handloom sari. If you see it closely, you can see that you know, in some so in some cases, the yarn is just one yarn is gone, and there you are developing design basically by putting collar. Okay. Okay. Yes. By putting collar, you design that thing. That is one process. Other process is that where you have rudra kya, where you have piece and other thing, particularly in the border and ancel. There it is called the extra warp and extra weft. Yes. If you are using it along the length, it is called extra warp. If you are using it in the ancel and across the uh, you know sari or any fabrics, that is called extra weft. Yes. So this is a process. In fact, here the uh, design is there. Suppose. This is a particular thing where you are designing, you know, the cuff cell, sunk, sunk joy. So, okay. usko pehle kya karte hain? They are put it under a graph, hmm. and in the graph, they find out that how many thread will be up and down, and what would be the color type of thing. Okay. So, this is one set of thing, and I was mentioning the two type of uh, designing. So, one set of designing is where you are doing it with the same thread. I uh, uh, like you see the typical uh, tie and dye. Uh, here you see the typical tie and dye is you are you you are not using additional thread in tie and dye, mm. but you are you know tying it and then dyeing it selectively okay. so that when you weave the design comes. Yeah. So this is with the same fabrics, mm. but the extra warp extra weave design is where we are using the additional thread. For example, I was mentioning about the rudra kya. Yeah. This is the rudraksha. You can see, and uh, you see how actually by using additional thread, the design has come. Now you know this process again has gone through revolutionary process. You know, in the north east we are talking about the loin loom, mm -hmm. and there they kept the design just by few pieces of bamboos. You know, those design they are still preserved, like it goes from generation to generation. So those using those bamboos, where the designs are literally you know engraved. They weave the fabrics and they get the design. Then comes something called jala, where yes. you are using putting the you know thread and doing that thing. Mm -hmm. Then the latest thing in handloom sector is the firstly dobby and the jacquard, where you mount those devices. So as the weaver goes on weaving, the lifting of thread is done automatically by the device. And for yes. doing that thing, you have to cut the design, you have to put the card and mount the card on the device. So that there, you, for, for each set of design, you have got set of cards, yeah. and you mount those cards on the machine, so that as you as the weaver goes ahead one by one, then one by one the card goes, and according to which thread would be lifted and which would be down, that comes, and that is how the design comes. Wow. So whether it is whether it is you know Varanasi brocade or it is tie and dye textile or the patola Gujarat or you know Kanchipuram silk. You know, everywhere it is the fundamentals are these, but then you know, weaving is a hereditary traditional skill. Every weaver is a fashion designer. Every weaver is a creator. So it is using his brain and using his local condition. You know, they make design as per the requirement, as per the customer choice, and you know, the process again is same. You know, either you put the color by uniformly, then when it is uniformly, you get one color, but when it is selectively. That is what is called the regist dye, regist dye technique. So the, you you know like you know put the you register a particular thing is registered so that the dye doesn't get there 
and yeah. other area you can die. Right. And you know this is a this is a variety of thing. You know, like from Patola to Orissa and other touchy from every weaver has his own technique and they do it in their own way. Incidentally, in Indonesia also this is known as the cut. So you know uh, they, they, this is this is how you know the handloom weaver they broadly make that thing, but finer details are there and it vary from place to place. I, actually, it's truly said that weavers are gifted, and they and we get to wear such colorful, such vibrant handlooms from these gifted persons. So we must appreciate their efforts towards it, like the time, the effort they have given for creating these wonderful pieces. So Very true. You see, you see, the point is, you know, these are basically traditional skills. Yeah. So the weaver has learned is from his father and from father from his grandfather. Yes. So it is a you know, rural cottage industry with a skill person from generation to generation. Very but one thing, one thing you must admit is that our handloom fabrics, it would be wrong to think that it is just a piece of cloth. It is mm -hmm. not a power loom cloth made by a machine. Very and I have seen weavers from very close quarters. You would be surprised to know that some weaver make a tie and dye of a particular fabric and it takes more than one year. Can you think of it? It takes more than one year to finish the tie and dye preparation of a particular fabric. Yeah. You know, the process basically is that you uh, take the design into the yarn and uh, yarn uh, that is warp and weft by the process of selective tying and dyeing. And then the process repeat for different colors. And then you make it uniform. And then, you know, you put, when you put it in the frame, you get the, exactly the same thing. What is the, in the paper design and what is going to come? Then with the process of you know weaving. So exactly. in weaving, if it is single cut, it will tell you one side. But if it is double cut, like the chessboard design, huh. the and other thing. So hmm. every thread has to be adjusted. Otherwise, you will not get that uh, design. So you know it is extremely not only artistic, but it is extremely laborious work. Like Patola, for example, in Gujarat, that is also extremely laborious and takes you know months together to weave a sign. So that is the beauty. It is not only artistic, not only the weaver has skill, but he has a lot of patience and he is extremely, you know, artistic in these matters. That's very true. Very true. The creativity of the weavers are unmatched. The creativity of the weavers goes unmatched. So moving on very to our next question. Our next question is, how can you differentiate between a handloom and a parloom product? Because nowadays you are seeing that most of the more uh, palloom products are being passed on as handlooms. So how, how do we differentiate? You see, the, the, that is the strength of technology. The power loom, because of new technology, they make fabrics and some of them are quite close to handloom fabrics. But uh, often if I tell, you know, if you take a handloom fabrics, you will find on the sides you know, there is a particular thing which they uh, use with a pin to hold it, to thread the fabrics, which yes. is not there in the power loom. So, you know, it, it, it requires the buyer to be careful to see whether it is a handloom or power loom. Um, and, you know, it is basically that is one of the thing. other things is that I will give a simple example. Like you are, you may be eating meat. So you cook meat in pressure cooker. Yes. You must have seen your mother, grandmother cooking meat in Mittiga Bartan Me with a lakadi. Yes. Okay. Is. So you taste the two. You mm. taste meat cooked in pressure cooker and you put eat meat cooked in Mittiga Bartan Me with a lakadi. Mm -hmm. And you can easily distinguish what is the difference between the two. What a wonderful example. Is. What a wonderful example. I guess that solves the entire thing. This makes a difference. The process is when you are making, uh, you know, meat in a vitika bartan and lakdi, process yes. is slow. Yes. So, you know, the biochemical reaction which goes on while you are preparing the food, it goes in a particular line and you get the best of taste. Whereas when you are putting it in the pressure cooker, you know, it is all in a hurry. You eat meat, no doubt, but the taste is not there. Not so, you know, ultimately, ultimately, you know, it goes to the uh, consumer. It goes to the consumer. If you want to read in between line and understand uh, the handloom fabric. And then I believe you are an entrepreneur. It is your job also to educate the consumer 
that look, this is what is handloom product, this is what is parloom product. But we shouldn't waste much time over this thing. Because you see, uh, let us, you know, in the consumer point of view, we see what is the main strength of handloom. Main strength of the handloom is the variety. Right. You see, if you go to Parloom, Bombay dyeing anything, you purchase 100 meter of uh, kapda and it would be same design. Because that is made monotonous on the Parloom. But when you go to Handloom, every single piece of, you know, the sari would be different. Because we were just do small tweaking, either, you know, a thread up and down or something, and you get a different design. So my point is that if we are strong and we advise, uh, if you educate the weaver suitably and also the consumer, then handloom can make product which the power loom cannot. So the question of competition doesn't arise. But the main point is that you have to pay the handloom weaver well so that he remain in the job. Yeah. If the weaver doesn't run the loom, if the younger generation do not find handloom weaving attractive and if they go for other job, then you know, handloom will That's remain exactly. only in the number of companies. You know. that, is, that, is, that is the that So, handloom, parloom differentiation, I think we should bother too much. You yeah. should go by the exquisite nature of the fabrics and every fabric is being different. You see, you are a lady and that is what every lady wants that he, she should put on a sari or dress which nobody else will have. So, really? this is not possible in parloom. This is not possible in power loom. That is where fashion element comes. That is where creative element comes. Where you mix fabrics, you mix design and make a new product. So that is what handloom weavers have been doing through ages. And with support, they can do it much better. Very true. Uniqueness is the USB of the handlooms. Like handlooms yes. cannot be replicated. Very true. No, no. Handloom can be replicated. Power loom can replicate handloom. With the new technology that is coming, power loom can be it can replicate to a great extent, but then handloom has its own place. Has be handloom has its own place. Very true, very true. Because I meant actually like the, in the handloom, like a second piece of the sari I'm wearing. If I want to make a second piece, the exact second piece won't be available. There'll be some or the other difference. So that is what the uniqueness stays in the handloom, which is not available in a power loom product. Uh, here I'll just make give you a small leaf. You know, the point is that the quality is the most important thing. Very if you if somebody likes a sari and order another piece, I think we must educate our weaver and pay them properly so that they try to replicate that design. There is nothing wrong in it. And it should be as per the quality specification. Both the dyes, designing, every dye, dyeing, designing, everything should be perfect. So that there is no, you know, uh, defect in the fabrics. Very good. So moving on to our next question, Dr. Panda. Our next question is, how has your experience working closely with the weavers during your tenure as Secretary Textiles been? It was a godsend opportunity, you know, because of my passion and my doing five years in Odisha, which is known for handloom. You know, Odisha is what? Utkal. What is Utkal? Utkal is excellence in art. What is art? Art is fabrics. Art is carving. This thing. So, Odisha is a great place of, you know, excellence in arts. And that is there with our handloom weavers. So, that was, in fact, uh, in my, what I should say, mind. And uh, when I got the opportunity, in fact, I joined on 1st August 2014. And on the very day itself, we started to see what can be done about handloom because you know everybody's tenure is limited and you know when they are going to retire and that cannot be extended and all that thing. I am extremely fortunate that we have I have I was guided by uh, the then Minister Textile the Santos Gangwa, who was a trained philosopher in guy and extremely affectionate person and gave me the full freedom. And I was more fortunate to have a boss that is Sri Narendra Modi who <laughs> are the innovation for textile and you know he gave very specific clear direction as to what is required to be done from hand because you see Modi sahab was chief minister of Gujarat all have to know and Gujarat is also like Odisha uh, is a very very prosperous state so far as handloom handicraft and other thing is concerned so his understanding of uh, um, uh, handloom handicraft is par excellence and the guidance he gives is extraordinary you know, so these are the, you know, one side I have the support of my boss and 
other side is the love and affection of the viewers and also i i interacted with large number of consumer and other organizations like yours they also came forward and i had a team of you know very good extremely sensitive enthusiastic and hard working uh, you know uh, uh, hard working team i should say it is not nothing junior senior it is a team we worked in a team and we could do lot of things and if i am more specific you see that is the time you know it was the first year of uh, the uh, new government under uh, visionary prime minister sri narendra modi ji so he mentioned that first thing is that zero defect and zero effect yes ab jo bhi kapda banaiye usme koi defect nahi hona chahiye rang ka dikh se aapka design ka dikh se jo bhi aap banaiye wo acha hona chahiye sahi hona chahiye that was the zero, that was zero defect and a zero effect is on the environment you know pollution you know you dye something you throw it in the environment and uh, to the pond throw it uh, road side it goes and uh, pollutes some water some animal dies some fish dies so that is what you have to be careful so that was one aspect and you know we gave you know rihanlum ka jo main basic problem hai that is lack of infrastructure you see whenever you are talking about defect please try to understand that it is not river's mistake it is his limitations you know he doesn't have facilities so what we did we started a infrastructure project that is called the common facility center and this scheme was approved and we could set up nine common facility center in each of the eight blocks and municipality of varanasi district that was the parliamentary constituency of our honorable prime minister so we started there and we could make this common facility center i'll explain you what is common facility center you see we were jab dyeing karta hai we were tar the designing karta hai usko teen cheez ka zarurat hai pehle hi ye kya hai ki acha quality ka raw material milna chahiye second hai aise facility hona chahiye jisme wo sahi dhang se dyeing designing kar sake kar sake aur kuch sik sake and third thing is that that is somebody technical to guide him so that was my close working with the handloom of yours of orissa can be that understanding and we made all the three things happen in the common facility center how common facility center was to be set up at a cost of rupees 2 crore and this entire 2 crore rupees was given by government of india as a 100% grant no state government contribution state government was to give only a piece of land and in this we have four things first thing is that we have a godown where the raw material dyes and chemical and finished product can be kept properly Second point is that we have an office with internet connectivity, with a generator, with proper uh, you know electric power supply, so mm -hmm. that you know at the weaver at the village level can get all the facilities, and like you and me were in the town, we are getting. That was the second thing: office with a power supply and internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. Third thing is that there was a training say where the weaver can be trained on design. You know, incidentally. हैंडलूम वीविंग जो काम होता है उसमें लार्ज नंबर ऑफ देम आर वुमेन वी कैन नॉट ब्रिंग टू देम टू भुवनेश्वर एंड गिव देम ट्रेनिंग वी लुक आफ्टर द चिल्ड्रन वी लुक आफ्टर द कुकिंग बट इफ वी डू समथिंग एट द विलेज लेवल एज पर देयर कन्वीनियंस दे कैन कम एंड लर्न तो कॉमन फैसिलिटी सेंटर में जो ट्रेनिंग का प्रशिक्षण का व्यवस्था के लिए भी हम लोग उसका अरेंजमेंट किए एंड द फोर एंड द फोर्थ थिंग वाज इंटरेस्टिंग दैट इज वेयर वी हैव प्रूव दैट देयर शुड बी ए गेस्ट रूम With attached toilet and running water. Oh. You see, you are a lady entrepreneur. You must have gone to your area, and yeah. when you go there, you always look at your watch that how will how when you will go back to your place. Huh. Very simple thing. It is the call of nature, and you know, a rural area may facility is not there. So we provided that thing. Common facility center. Me, if there is a town to go, so he or she can stay there the night. Wow. He can interact with the viewers. You know that was the concept, and it was not on paper. We made the new scheme, and we sanctioned the new scheme, and also we constructed this thing in Paranas, and we requested How others. Great. Actually, if these schemes continue, then actually the weaver, the life, the weaver community would would benefit a lot from it, and they would continue weaving. You see, the problem is that government. There are many things. You know, government. Me, new new log aate hain. Unka naya bichar hai, naya soch hai, and they look at it different ways. So, 
I wish that this thing will continue. And seven dagas ko abhi hamara manya Mr. Minister Madam ne both achhi baat bataye and gave full assurance to the handloom sector for its survival. I am, I am sure they will look into. So this was one aspect that is the common facility center. Second thing we mention is that you know, jo Modi Sahab ka nara hai ki digital India. Yes. Or subsequently he made it to the jam that is Jandan. Aadhar and mobile linkages, which created evolution in the rural area. In our handloom sector, the problem is what? Basic problem is that handloom workers, who are poorly earning, it has to be increased. And this increase is not going to be from the government. This increase will come basically from customers like you, who will appreciate the product, and they will see the product is as per their requirement, and they will be happy. Pay more than what is the price? No, rebate is required. We will give ten percent more. You take ten percent more, not best good product. So, ये जो दोनों का जो संजोग है ना, इसी में ही दिक्कत है। जो युवा लोग हैं, दे रिमेन इन द रूरल एरिया, और जो लोग जिनके जेब में पैसा है, people having a good paying capacity, and second thing is the पैसा only होने से नहीं होगा। You should have a taste for handloom. Yes. जिनका जो handloom product में दिलचस्पी है जिनका हैंडलूम प्रोडक्ट में रुचि है, जिनका इसका ऊपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग है, इसी टाइप का लोग जिनके पास पैसा है, हमको उसी टाइप का ग्राहक चाहिए हैंडलूम को आगे लेने के लिए। पर डिफिकल्टी है कि ये जो दो लोग हैं, गांव में रहता है, टाउन में रहता है, दोनों का लिंकेज नहीं हो पाता। तो ये दोनों after the Human Cooperative Society, we have got Handloom Development Corporation, that is Utkalika. You see, these were good organizations, but they were relevant in 1950, where there was no communication, no road, no electric light, no power supply. But if we see 70 years after today, we see we need Bhavanika, we need Utkalika, because any government organization would be more sensitive towards its employees than the producer that is we have. आज का दिन है जो बहन का उत्कल का में है तो यार बोर है यू नो बिजी लुकिंग आप लोग तो सैलरी या नदर थिंग ऑफ दे यार क्लार्क या ना नदर थिंग नदर दिवे जब तुम्हें बस इस पाइट नॉर्मल इस पाइट नेचुरल तो अभी का दिन में क्या है लेट बहन का उत्कल का लेट दम कंटिन्यू नो ग्राज अगेंस्ट दे� देखिए एक तो है कि आपके पास मोबाइल फोन है ये मोबाइल फोन के थ्रू में आप अपना कपड़ा का डिजाइन उठाइए और उसको आप फेसबुक में डाल दीजिए उसको व्हाट्सएप में डाल दीजिए सारे ब्रह्मांड के जितने लोग हैं सब लोग उसको जानेंगे कि अरे मणियाबंद का और बर्फली का उइवर इतना अच्छा बनाता है तो फिर दे विल टेल कि मुझे ये कपड़ा चाहिए ये चाहिए कोई बोलेगा कि काला के जगह पर पीला बने बनाइए कोई बोला कि रेड के जगह पर येलो दीजिए येलो के जगह पर ब्लैक दीजिए और आई डोंट लाइक फिश डिजाइन यू गिव रूटा का डिजाइन all these things can be transmitted. And no language is required, no computer is required. You, know, you need not know English to communicate. <laughs> Just through, you know, uh, photograph itself with you know, Fabric. That is what, that is, no, no, that is what is the strength of technology. That is what technology has made the revolution. So, in the dunya we should try to bridge the gap between the weaver and the consumer directly so that they can directly interact. This is one thing. Second thing, जो हमारे प्रधानमंत्री साहब ने शुरू किए, that is startup. Startup कौन है? Startup है कि नहीं कि है? Because those who are already in the business, they are not doing startup. You see, Amitabh Bachchan is a startup in film industry, but Abhishek Bachchan is not startup. Abhishek Bachchan is second generation thing. So हमारे जो weaver का लोग है, weaver लोग अपना तैयार करते हैं, लेकिन business नहीं कर पाते। लेकिन उनका घर का जो लड़का लड़की है, जो कि इंजीनियरिंग किए हैं, जो कि ग्रेजुएशन किए हैं, दे सुड बी हेल्प विथ लोन, विथ हैंड होल्डिंग, विथ मेंटरिंग, सो दैट दे कैन टेक अप बिजनेस। तो ये स्टार्टअप जो है, वो स्टार्टअप वीवर प्रोडक्ट को ग्राहक के पास पहुंचाने में मदद करेगा। इसी they can also come forward and start up their uh, have their own stand up. You see, it's me kaya, they keep business karta business to profit kill ye karnate. 
कोई अगर बोलता है कि मैं विदाउट प्रॉफिट बिजनेस करता हूँ देन दिस बिजनेस विल नॉट लास्ट लॉन्ग यू नो एक्सेप्ट फॉर ए फ्यू वेरी वेरी बिग फिलंथ्रोपिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट द पॉइंट इज दैट यू डू प्रॉफिट विदाउट किलिंग द मदर जो वीवर है वीवर का जो मजदूरी मिलना है पहले उसको बढ़ाइए अच्छा से बढ़ाइए फिर अपना प्रॉफिट दे अगर कोई स्टार्टअप बोलेगा कि मैं सारे प्रॉफिट ले जाऊंगा वीवर को देगा नहीं उसका सिया देन इट विल नॉट बी सस्टेनेबल यू नो दैट इज द पॉइंट बी फेयर एंड यू सी दिस विल कम ओनली व्हेन देयर इज मोर कंपटीशन एक गांव में पहले हमारा मास्टर वीवर था एक मास्टर वीवर जो करता था वही करता था पर अगर हमारा एक गांव में वीवर के गांव में 1000 वीवर है हम 50 स्टार्टअप करेंगे वीवर हैथ द चॉइस ही कैन गो टू एनी स्टार्टअप हु विल गिव इन द बेस्ट वे and there will be a competition so that on the one hand we will get a better deal other hand the consumer will get a better deal and that is how the demand for production will go up you know this is again the startup concept also we have started the during you know uh, the that same time when you know i had the opportunity of serving so we were under guidance of honorable prime minister yeah. and the third thing jo hai sabse important hai that is the confidence of consumer वीवर का है जो वीवर तो प्रोड्यूस करता है लेकिन जो कंज्यूमर है ऑनलाइन बिजनेस करने के लिए ही और सी नीड्स टू हैव द कॉन्फिडेंस कि मेरा चीज सही है ये नहीं है कि आई एम बीइंग चीटेड यस यू सी ब्रांडिंग का कांसेप्ट क्या है ब्रांडिंग का कांसेप्ट इज नथिंग बट ट्रस्ट ऑफ द कंज्यूमर वो जैसे आप जाते हैं सोरिस तेल मस्टर्ड ऑयल खरीद करने के लिए अब क्या करते हैं अरे भाई इंजन ब्रांड लाना इंजन ब्रांड क्यों यू नो दैट सम ऑफ इंजन ब्रांड ओवर इयर्स हैव एस्टैब्लिश्ड अ क्रेडिबिलिटी That it will not be bad. It will not be adulterated. आप डिटर्जेंट खरीद करने के जाते हैं। पर यार आप सार पेक्सल सार पेक्सल ले आइए। ये सार पेक्सल ब्रांडिंग has not come up in a day. It has come up over eight years, and it helped both the you know company and also both the consumer. Consumer. So our my the point with which we started, and honourable prime minister again gave his time, and he was kind enough to release the India Handloom brand. ये हम एक ऐसे ब्रांड करें कि जो ब्रांड में भी हुई The consumer will get the confidence that I am not getting cheated. Incidentally, India Handloom brand is mainly for the producer, yes. so that the producer who will do the producer's place will apply, and then that time the system will be the weaver service center. The handloom people, the textile committee, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service center, the people who are knowledgeable about the weaver service then they will give him the india handloom brand right. aur ye sare tarse jo hai wo bc handloom ka jo website hai wo aap par likha rahega suppose you want to purchase a mania bandha sari then you will go to orissa in bc handloom site you will go to orissa from orissa you go to kotak district mm. then you go to mania bandha right. in mania bandha on your screen you will find 20 uh, weaver producer who have got the handloom mark then they will have their individual product ka details rahega price bhi rahega you like it you uh, click that thing And then they tell ten to twenty days the power the power will come. You get that thing and you know they will pay the money. Yes, Amazon or whatever it is. And you know the system was also there. That we must have a grievance redressal system. If any buyer will say that I bought this from India, 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 That 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 is that was what was the uh, that time thinking and uh, we are lucky that our uh, prime minister guided us and he himself you know released the India handloom brand at Chennai in the first handloom uh, national handloom day. But you know branding does not it doesn't happen in a day. It takes years. Yes. But it has to be sustained. And here we need apart from government, the most important thing is consumer like you. You should tell that India handloom brand guy chahiye. जो वीवर है यू विल आल्सो टेल कि मैं इंडिया में हैंडलूम ब्रांड में ये वस्तु बनाऊंगा एंड मैं उसका जो मेरा जो प्रेस्टीज है मेरा जो ब्रांडिंग है उसको मैंने कोई भी आंच आने में नहीं दूंगा एंड थर्ड इज द सिविल सोसाइटी ये तीनों का कोशिश से ये आगे जा सकता है ओके सो एक्चुअली आई जस्ट वांट टू आस्क यू व्हाट लेड टू द डिजाइनिंग ऑफ द लोगो व्हाट इज द लोगो डिपिक्ट एक्चुअली वी गेट टू सी इट्स अ इट्स अ फ्लावर लोगो इट्स अ लोटस फ्लावर लोगो दैट हैज बीन यूज्ड एज अ handloom brand so what do that logo depict you see you have mentioned you know our you know we we have to work on a, uh, we have to work very hard on this particular thing and you know our honorable prime minister is a very hard task master yeah. he is not the one who is going to pick up anything and get satisfied 
so this particular thing was tried again tried again corrected again corrected but we have you know one thing was there fundamental in our mind that one thing was the tana bana i mean yes. Yes. so if you see the uh, india handloom brand the tana bana is there you know basically tana, tana bana is that is the weaving thing that is the handloom thing yeah. second thing is our tiranga uh -huh. you know the three colors of the uh, national flag so usi do ko lekar ke we played with several things then he guided he we again made something then finally it took one and that become the that it is only a logo but then we are grateful to him for giving the time and showing the interest okay that's so nice that's so nice again my next question is to you is being a man of textiles how do you think we can actually bridge the gap between the weavers and the consumers main aapko bataya na Nah. You see, the basic difference is basic problem is that the weavers stay in their villages, and the consumer with paying capacity and with you know taste for handloom, they live in towns, they live abroad. So, ये सब पहले संभव नहीं होता था क्योंकि ये सब government का through में करना पड़ता था and government system has its limitations. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> you cannot say that the government they just said something, but sustaining it with the quality is very difficult. You know, business should be done by private sector. So, ये जो है So we see, go. We have to now to connect it digital, and through you know startup entrepreneur. One side is the digital thing, other side is the startup entrepreneur. I think that the, this is coming up, and uh, I am hopeful that it will come up very fast, and uh, it will bridge the gap and the things will be achieved. Lastly, I would like to ask you any advice for the viewers and the customers who are going to buy handlooms in future. So, what advice would you like to give them? You see, I am not the advice. I will make a humble appeal. Yes. Okay. My appeal is that first, if you are Indian, and if you have faith, confidence, and your liking for our heritage, you should feel that our is a civilization which is several thousand years old. America is hardly thousand years old. We are several thousand years old. Harappa, Nalanda, all these places. So, if you feel that you are a You know, आप उसी का उत्तराधिकारी हैं। You know, if you feel that you are out of that particular culture, you yes. must try to cook it hand. और इसके लिए आपको क्या करना चाहिए? I have told three things. First thing is that please speak a good word about handloom. Good word about handloom वही बात। अच्छा बात बोलने से पैसा नहीं पड़ता है। Very good. घुमाड़ करिए दूसरों को बताइए। Second thing is that you wear handloom to the extent possible. Okay, I am very happy that you are uh, put on the handloom thing, and I have also put on the handloom sack. Okay. So <laughs> I would suggest that you know, we are supporting uh, uh, local for local. Very good, very good. So I know I would request that not only support in mouth, but purchase a handloom gift, maybe for your wife, maybe for your friend, maybe you know whoever your family whoever you feel like. And similarly, the male folk, uh, women folk should also purchase sack, rumal, tie, whatever they can out of handloom on a particular day. that is the second thing third thing is those who have time and i'm particularly telling the persons who have retired from active life but physically they are active they should mentor the startups very jaise main aapke sath baat kar raha hu jaise dekhiye ek weaver ka gaon ka ek ladka hai jo ki engineering karke baitha hai weaver ka ghar ka and he want to start a startup wo jagayega pehle to usko jagah mein bhul gaya ek cheez aapko bolne the other thing is that the mudra loan You mm -hmm. know, I was mentioning you the various requirement. Other thing is the mudra loan, so that if they, and the youth of Anlum family they get ten lakh rupees without any collateral, they can definitely set up a good business. So, a mudra loan for that, for export, for that, for the college, for the paperwork, for that, for paperwork, for that, for the 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 paperwork, for that, and i will end with uh, uh, one more thing is that whenever we are promoting handloom you see aap agar ek 5000 rupya ka saari khareedte hain please remember that you are feeding a family for 7 days and it is not free rice it is not free dal you are just rewarding them for that work so aap agar ek saari khareedte hain ek it is not that you are purchasing a piece of fabrics you are also feeding a family for 7 days that is the beauty of this particular thing वन साइड योर नेशनल हेरिटेज कल्चर को प्रोटेक्ट कर रहे हैं दूसरे साइड आप किसी को खाना खिला रहे हैं किसी को मदद कर रहे हैं जो कि हु इज नॉट इकोनॉमिकली वेल ऑफ लाइक यू एंड मी आप जानते हैं आज के दिन में 
Uh, we, are, we are all trying for sustainable development goal. Exactly. Sustainable development goal, SDG 2030, is the entire United Nations concept that the whole world is going for that. Exactly. You promote handloom. What will happen? You promote handloom, this ke paas, jo hai, a khana this ke paas nahi hai, hunger this ka hai, huda nivaran ho jayega. So yes. that is goal number one. Duvivar ka jeb mein paisa jayega. So aapka daritra durikaran ho jayega. Poverty, eliminate ho jayega. Eliminate ho Hard thing is, hard thing is, are main, mainly women. Then yeah. women empowerment ho jayega. Yes. And then environmental protection ho jayega. Yes. So ye sustainable development goal ka jo char main mudde hai. That is no hunger, no poverty, women empowerment and environmental protection. Ye aap ek sadi kharidne se you can contribute. Abhi dekhe pilal jo jabe Ram Temple ka sila naswa. So aap to dekhe honge hamare yehi hamara ghar ke aas paas mein bol sare gilleria ghum rahe. Yes. Squirrel. Ye jo humko Odia Odia mein usko bolte hain gunditi musa. Yes. So ye jo squirrel hai unka back mein there are stripes. Ah. So stripes ke koon diya? I would, yeah. You may be looking, but I will reiterate it that the Alpha, the epic, when the Setu Bandha was going on, was being laid for connecting the road to Sri Lanka so that Lord Rama will go and fight Ravan. That time, the monkeys they were taking the stone and making the bridge. Huh. So, some of these Galeria Squirrel they look around and found that something good is happening. Yes. So, they cannot leave stone. So, what they did, they dipped yeah. over the sea water, rolled over the sand. And soak the excess sand on the uh, setu, mm. and that is what you know. Lord Rama was so pleased that mm. he patted its back, and that is what it got this time. So my request to you and all your viewers that you may not make great things. What Mother Teresa mentioned that each one of us may not be able to do great things, yes. but we can do small things with great affection, with great commitment. So please purchase handloom. Say a few good words about handloom viewers. I think that is okay. Be a student. That's all. Thank you so much for sharing uh, like all these knowledgeable words, Mr. Dr. Panda. Like we are really obliged. We got to learn so much from you. Thank you so, so much for these valued inputs. And we consider ourselves lucky that we have you with us today. And you enlightened our viewers with all your knowledge. So a big thanks to you for that. Thank you so Thank much. You.